Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the seven game NBA main slate on Friday. Before we get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is DK. I made daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL sites on DraftKings, and I'm now making videos for NBA Top Shot as well. If you guys are unfamiliar with NBA Top Shot, I have a video explaining that, but again, it's basically virtual trading cards, virtual moments. If you are unable to watch these YouTube videos, they're also up on Apple Podcasts. I have a link down below. It's called the DK DFS Show. If you guys are interested in signing up for premium content, I offer that on Patreon.com, an esports package, which includes Call of Duty and CSGO, as well as an NBA package. And then finally, I want to thank Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring the show. If this is your first time watching these videos or you're not familiar with Underdog Fantasy, um, basically they have daily fantasy snake drafts as well as season-long best ball. So if you are a best ball player, Underdog Fantasy is for you. After you sign up and uh, dep and you make your first deposit, you need to go DKDFS, DKDFS, all one word. Um, you will get a money back guarantee up to $100. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's jump in the video. So before we talk about players and their prices for this seven game slate, we can look back at the lineup here from Thursday. So uh, Thursday, I uh, went with Lowry Brunson, Tim Mardo Jr., Tobias Harris, Tony Bradley, Victor Oladipo, Olenek, Eric Gordon. Um, so obviously the Eric Gordon injury sucks super tilting i will tell you what happened here so um i had kevin porter jr and actually chris paul and like i wasn't super high in chris paul's so, like i didn't really want to play him but he was just the last piece in because um you know once we got that john wall news out i really wanted to get oladipo and and obviously you guys knew i was really high in kevin porter jr as well um but once we got that news that um, Eric Gordon was in like, again, we had, we had Gordon and wall questionable wall out Gordon in once we get that news that Eric Gordon got ruled in late. I always like getting guys if they get ruled in late, like into my lineup. Cause like if they get ruled in way after lock, they're always going to be super low owned. And again, we had 4% owned Eric Gordon. I think he had 15 fancy points in the first five minutes and then literally did like nothing the rest of the first half and then got injured. I'm looking at that. I'm just like, really? Are you serious? Uh, but yeah, Hardaway was solid, but Kevin Porter Jr. was actually better. Kevin Porter Jr. went for 42. I know a lot of you got on him, so um, happy for happy for you guys. Um, yeah, if I stuck with, if I stuck, I did the calculations. If I stuck with Kevin Porter Jr. and Chris Paul there, would have finished with over 300 and cashed and everything easily. But that's the way it goes sometimes. And I like, I feel like I've never made a correct pivot ever. Like I always talk about some Patreon, but whenever I make like a two v two swap, every single time it goes wrong. Literally every single time. Um, but yeah, the rest of my lineup again: Lowry. I, you guys knew I was really high in Toronto, so like Lowry, Boucher, Norman Powell, Boucher and Powell both crushed. Lowry started. Oh man, I was tilting so hard. Lowry and Tobias Harris, I think, started like O of thirteen combined. <laughs> Uh, they both, or Lowry got there. Tobias was going to get there if that game did not blow out, which was obviously frustrating too. You know, the 76ers with no Joel Embiid, no Ben Simmons, and they still blow out Chicago. If Tobias Harris gets, you know, his normal run, he probably goes for 50. So that was the correct play. He was 71% owned. You just got really unlucky with the blowout there if you played him. Uh, Tony Bradley was only 21% owned. I was a little bit worried with him starting just because we've seen Philadelphia do weird things with their starting centers, kind of like what Dallas does, but luckily they gave him the minutes. And yeah, that's really it for the luck back, guys. So I hope you guys had a good night. I know a lot of you, uh, a lot of you guys in the Discord had some really good nights. Uh, I know a couple of you on Twitter had some big nights. So let's see if we can keep it rolling, guys, for this uh, seven-game slate. And we have two of the seven games out right now. Denver and Memphis is a 228 over under. The Nuggets are three and a half point favorites and Pacers Lakers at two seventeen and a half over under the Lakers are four and a half point favorites. All right. So uh, let's start with Philadelphia and Washington. And the big news is Joel Embiid. So Ben Simmons is still out Embiid. I'm pretty sure he's going to play because they said he would be a, a whoop, whoops. Um, if he continues to test negative, he would be available to return Friday. So like, I'm pretty sure Embiid is going to be available. If he is, he's a really good spend up against Washington because it's one of the best possible matchups. So would really like Embiid if he plays. If Embiid somehow, if he can't play, then obviously, you know, we're going back to the same thing, right? It's Tobias Harris at the top. It's whoever starts at the center. Probably would be Tony Bradley again, who'd be one of the best value plays. And then, you know, we have the two guards, Shake Milton, Seth Curry. 
almost a coin flip might slightly give the edge to, to shake but those two would still look pretty solid in the mid-range you guys know my feelings on Danny Green. Uh, and then Korkmaz uh, did play 24 minutes. He's reliant on scoring, but did hit his shot. So, like, yeah, he would be a playable value guy as well. Uh, Thibel actually did play 28 minutes. Um, you know, had five steals, more of an outlier. We know, again, he's more out the first defense. So those are the guys who really look to if Embiid is out. Um, again, if Embiid is in, then it's probably in bead for me at the top. And then it just feels like everyone got a little bit priced up from when he was out. So I don't know if I'll get to anyone else if it bead does play. Moving on to Washington. Big news is Brad Beal, currently questionable. If he's out, I don't know how I get away from Russell Westbrook, unless, unless you think this game blows out, which I think is definitely a possibility. Washington's, you know, they've been winning lately, but they're still not a great team. And if Beal's out there's a decent chance this game does not stay close. So that would be the reason you fade Westbrook if there's no Beal. But yeah, if this game stays close and Bradley Beal does not play, I don't know how I get away from Russell Westbrook at 10.2K. So would really, really like Westbrook there at the top. Uh, Rui, no thank you. If there's no Beal, I'm really curious to see what Washington does. Like, I don't know who they're going to move in. I don't think they move Neto in alongside Westbrook. I mean, I guess they could. My guess is that someone like maybe a Jerome Robinson or Troy Brown and these guys, even though they're not, they haven't really been in the rotation, are actually solid point per minute guys. Like if you guys played DFS last year, Troy Brown, like I forget what price he he got up to, like pretty. I think he got up to like seven k. Like he was like their number one offense for a long time. Um, again, Jerome Robinson, when he gets minutes, he normally produces. So like keep an eye on that. If one of those guys start, they would be a decent value. I don't still don't really have a ton of interest in Garrison Matthews. Um, and then the bigs, it's my same breakdown, right? Wagner will start. He's risky because he usually doesn't play a ton. Robin Lopez is the low, lowest usage of the guy, lowest usage of the bunch, but he should play the most. And Len sometimes will play, sometimes won't. Also good point for a guy, but if you play him, probably about a 50-50 chance he doesn't play. Uh, Denny, be careful here. I played him last slate for value because it's a two-game slate. This is a seven-gamer. It's just, I know he's going for 2016 and 25 fancy points, but I don't know. Just a little bit worried here. Um, might I feel like he might be a little bit over-owned. I'm not saying he's a terrible play, but uh, he also has a pretty low floor, and we've seen it a decent amount, like single-digit fancy point floor. All right, let's move on to Cleveland and New Orleans. So Cleveland, like Jared Allen, I just... Don't really like that price there. Uh, we do have uh, Larry Nance back, possibly Kevin Love too. So I had to keep an eye on that. If they're both in, then there's really just not a ton I like. Like Garland is questionable, but doesn't do a whole lot for me. Like if he's out, slight boost to Sexton, but like he's already priced over 8K. I mean, a Coral probably picks up a few extra minutes, but not super interested in that price. Really, Cleveland's a team I have, don't have a ton of interest in. Uh, moving on to. <laughs> Uh, moving on to the uh, New Orleans Pelicans. So Zion Williamson at 9.1K was on pace for a really good game, and then the game blew out. So uh, again, he has been just tearing it up recently. I think the nine point, the over 9K price is warranted for, for his play. So I do like Zion there at the top. Ingram kind of secondary play. Lonzo, Bledsoe, kind of the same thing. Mentioned that Steven Adams probably had to play more against Cat. He did. He played 30 minutes in a play. He probably would have played more if the game would have stayed close. Now, will they need him necessarily against Jared Allen? I don't know if they're necessarily needing him. So maybe only plays like mid twenties minutes, which again, then just makes him a fair play. That's it for New Orleans. So let's move on to Denver and Memphis. It's Jokic at the top. I do like a good amount. Um, Jokic is playing every slate, but yeah, Jonas Valanciunas is not the best defender. Should play thirty-five plus minutes. Super high usage guy. Got to keep an eye on Jamal Green, Paul Millsap. They might be coming back in this one. Uh, if they're both in, and that takes the guys like Composo, PJ Dozier, completely out of play for value. The other guys, Murray, MPJ, just more tournament plays. That's kind of it. Like, Monty Morris, if both those guys are out, probably continues to play about 30 minutes, but not a super high usage guy. I'm going to Memphis. So, John Moran, I think that's that price point will scare some people off, but I still have interest in him. He should play about 35 minutes. Uh, he's a guy that uh, does have a good amount of upside. I'm not really scared of Denver defensively. So he's gone for 58, 51, and 44 fans points the last three games. I think Jaws is a good tournament play. Jonas Valanciunas, hey, he didn't get in foul trouble for me. Well, what happened when he didn't get in foul trouble? Almost 70 fantasy points. Again, he's a really good point for a guy. Uh, just the last two times I played him, he's gotten in foul trouble. If he can stay out of foul trouble, he should play 
about 30 minutes. Now, there is a decent chance he does get in foul trouble going up against Jokic. So that is the concern with Jonas Valanciunas. I think that makes him a GBP only play. But we know the range of outcomes. Are, if he gets in foul trouble, he's probably going to bust. If he can stay out of foul trouble, he we know the upside is there. We just saw it the last game. Slow-mo, nah. Dylan Brooks also got in foul trouble last game. If you played him, I feel for you. I do, because he missed out on a good amount of minutes. He should play around 30 minutes. He's more reliant in the scoring. Um, and in a seven-game slate, I'm not, I'm not as excited about it. Clark, Winslow, they're kind of just fair plays. We do have Grayson Allen back, too, which kind of hurts, like, the guards. Um, I think Clark win- I think Clark probably plays mid-20s minutes. Winslow probably plays about 20. I mean, they're, like, okay filler options, but there's nothing really else that stands out. Moving on to Orlando and San Antonio. So, Nikola Vucevic at 10.3K I think is a good play at the top, really. He just continues to get it done. He's playing big minutes. Aaron Gordon was very limited uh, tonight. It's a back-to-back. Maybe they sit him out this one. I mean, it won't, wouldn't do it. Wouldn't really affect Vooch, Vooch too much. Um, so I, I do like Vooch. I do at the top. Uh, Ross, Fournier, uh, Cole Anthony, James Ennis, all questionable. My guess is all these guys are out since they missed tonight. Uh, if that is the case um, and Aaron Gordon missed, I mean, either way, I don't think Aaron Gordon's going to play a ton. If he plays, he'll probably play about 15 minutes. So really doesn't matter too much. Michael Carter Williams is 6.3K. Should play around 30-ish minutes. He's a guy that, you know, can stuff the stat sheet. I think is a safer play at that price. Probably is not going to kill you. I don't know if he's going to win you a GPP. Uh, value-wise, Dwayne Bacon shot the ball well. Like, I knew the Mets would be there. My my always concern with Dwayne Bacon is he's not going to do a ton of, ton of the peripherals. But he had 21 real-life points. So if you played him, he got you there because of, you know, he shot well. That is always the risk of Dwayne Bacon. Like, I, I expect if all those guys are out, him to play about 30 minutes. Uh, but again, he's got to hit his shots. Now, interesting value play here, if all those guys are out, is Chase on Randall. Played 30 minutes. Not a super, super high usage guy, but is basically min-price, 3.1K. Yeah, if all those guards are out, I do have some mention in Randall at, at that price. I'm not playing Gary Clark. Ken Birch at 3K. Did play 23 minutes. They used, like, a weird bench rotation of, like, all bigs. It was, like, Birch, Bamba, Chuma Okiki, Gary Clark, and then the one guard, Randall. Um, I mean, all these guys actually got, like, decent run. Like, Okiki played 20 seconds. I knew Orlando. I knew they were going to do this. I knew they were just going to play, like, everyone, like, mid-20s minutes. Uh, I think Mo Bamba, yeah, he played a little bit. So, it's like, if all those guys are out, I think there's there's a couple of viable vet plays. We have... Uh, Chase on Randall, we have Okiki and Ken Birch. Am I going to feel good about any of those guys? Not really, but they all played over 20 minutes last game. I'm moving on to San Antonio. No DeMar DeRozan is pretty big news. So DeJounte Murray at the top at 7.5K, I do like. Even with Derek White back, even with Keldon Johnson back, he still played 35 minutes, which is honestly, even though he didn't do great that game, it's good to see that it looks like He's going to continue to play about 35 minutes a game. So I do like DeJounte at the top. Jakob Pertl, if you played him, he was a huge letdown last game. The minutes were there. He just did absolutely nothing. Also was in a little bit of foul trouble. They're going to need him to guard Nikola Vucevic. So like I think he plays 30 to 35 minutes. Um, he was somewhat popular, not like super chalk, but I think like 15, 20% owned. Um, you know, that ownership is going to drop because of recency bias. Uh, we've seen some pretty decent games from Jakob Pertl. Um, so yeah, I think he is just a fair play. Obviously no more Aldridge. Rudy Gay got me there. Uh, almost won me a GVP, uh, last night. Went for 13, nine and one. Got a little bit lucky with some Keldon Johnson foul trouble too. I'm expecting around 20 to 25 minutes from Rudy Gay, which at five, two kind of just makes him a secondary play. Now again, Keldon Johnson, he was popular. He was a chalk boss last night. He was in foul trouble. It's just the minutes are so up and down with him. The upside is there. But the minutes always fluctuate. So, like, I think he's a good tournament play. Below 5K, no DeMar DeRozan. I honestly think you could go there and cash games. I guess the one the one hesitation I have is it's just Popovich. And you just you just don't know of Keldon Johnson's minutes. You always you think you do with Pop, but he'll always do something weird. Like, people thought Trey Lyles was going to get a good amount of minutes. Drew Eubanks, right? Just out of nowhere. So, uh, that's, that's just the risk of Popovich. But... Um, with no DeMar DeRozan, I do think we get more from, more minutes from Keldon Johnson, which I think makes him a pretty solid play. Derek White was also popular, was also a chalk bust. 27 minutes, 8 fancy points. But like I said, one of super high usage guys out of the offense, it 
it really does help everyone. So Murray, White, Keldon Johnson, I think all look pretty solid. Patty Mills at 4-5, not a super exciting play. Might be safer than guys like Keldon and Derek White. But if you're shooting for the upside, I think it's it's Keldon, Derek White. Again, Trey Lyles, he was somewhat popular. Barely played. They went to Drew Eubanks. You just never know if Pop. I mean, Drew, I mean, I guess Drew Eubanks only played like one shift. He played four minutes. Um, so, yeah, that's really it. Uh, Devin Vassell at min price. Is looks like he'll be good to go too. I mean, they are kind of shorthanded, so maybe we'll get 15 to 20 minutes. You can punt with him at, at the price. Just just be careful because it's Popovich. I don't want to get too much Spurs exposure just because it's just, it will always raise your blood pl- pressure whenever you're playing a ton of Spurs. I'll just tell you that. All right, so uh, Miami, no Bama to bio. Once again, it's Jimmy Butler at the top, and it's Kyle Olenek. Jimmy Butler, 62 fans. I mean, he just continues to get it done, night in and night out. I love the matchup here. It's a revenge game narrative. I think he's going to be a lot more popular in this slate, but it's for good reason. I really like Jimmy, and I really like Kelly Olenek again. Kelly Olenek continues to play. The center position continues to play about 35 minutes. gone for 45 and twenty or 45 and 38 fancy points. I'm really high on Jimmy. I'm really high on Kelly Olenek. The guards kind of secondary plays with Drogic, Hero, none. If you land on one of those guys, that's fine. It's a good matchup, but not really going out of my way to play anyone. Chicago. They're pretty much healthy now. Uh, Kobe White's at 6.8K. We probably get over 30 minutes from him, but like, I don't love the price. Levine, I just, I need that price to go down. I just, I'm not going to pay almost 10K for Zach Levine. Markkinen, Wano Carter Jr., Otto, just no one else to really have interest in. Um, I mean, they kind of took it easy in those guys' minutes, and it was a blowout, but I'll be staying away. Now, Houston, all right, get ready because this is where we're going to be talking um, a lot of players because a, there's a lot of guys that are interesting here for Houston. So first, um, we have John Wall, questionable. Eric Gordon, they got injured tonight. I don't expect him to play. House, questionable technically, and looks like Kuroks. If all those guys are out, I'm assuming they are since it was back-to-back. So that's going to leave them pretty thin and – We've seen Victor Oladipo rest in back-to-backs. Do they rest him here? They might not have a choice. They might have to play him. I think if they do rest him, they'll have eight healthy bodies. I think it would be, what, one? It would be Tate, one, Patton, two, Brown, three, Macklemore, four, Lamb, five, Porter Jr., six, Martin, seven. Maybe it'll, maybe they need Oladipo if, like, Kuroks or House can't play. So, yeah, what, what I'm saying is Houston most likely will be really shorthanded. So, Let's just say everyone that played tonight plays again tomorrow. So if that's the case and these guys are out again and Oladipo plays, I think Oladipo, even even though it's the Jazz, is one of the best spin-ups. Should play huge minutes, will be the number one on the offense. You know, didn't shoot the ball great, but went for 58 fancy points. So would really like Oladipo at the top. Or oh, that was the last, never mind. Sorry about that. That was against Brooklyn. He did not have, I would say, he did not have 58 fancy points. He had over 40 fancy points tonight. It wasn't crazy, but... um. Yeah, he will be the number one in the offense for sure. So, um, would like Oladipo get him out there at the top. And then, yeah, Kevin Porter Jr. was really high on him. Uh, once we got that news that John Wall is out, mentioned him uh, multiple times in the live stream, was somewhat low owned too. Again, I pivoted off him, unfortunately, but he had a big game one for 40 plus fancy points. Um, I really like him. I really, I think he's, he's going to be the chalk. Um, but it's hard to get away from him. I think Sterling Brown becomes a pretty solid value play. Really, everyone on this team is viable because they're going to be so shorthanded. So, um, Houston's definitely a team you're going to want to have a good amount of interest in. Patton, if he played him tonight, I feel for you. Foul trouble. Um, he probably plays 25 to 30 minutes. Again, decent play. Uh, I even have interest in uh, KJ Martin because there's no PJ Tucker's no longer playing, and he's going to play like, the backup five. So, I like him at min price. Uh, really, again, every Macklemore is viable. Basically, every single player, again, that is active for Houston, I have interest in uh, for this slate. Moving on to Utah. So, if you're going to get a good, if you're going to get a good amount of Houston exposure, you know, you can run it back with one of the Utah Jazz guys. My one concern with Utah is just, can the Rockets keep it close? There's a pretty good chance. I would say better than 50% chance this game does not stay close. So that, I mean, that is the risk with this game. So, like, the top three guys, Mitchell, Gobert, Conley, I think all look pretty good. I mean, it's a great matchup. 
Um, no one can really stick with them. So I like them all. It's just a matter of, are you confident that Houston can keep it close? Now, Ursan is now a member of the Utah Jazz. I'm going to stay away for now. I'm going to get curious to see what they do with the rotation. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's the top three guys for Utah, and that's it. Um, finally, Pacers, Lakers. This should be a good game to watch. Maybe not the best for DFS. Dematis a bonus at 9.9K. I think, you know, plays 38 or so minutes. Stuffs the stat sheet. Again, not really the best matchup, but... Uh, I'm fine getting to him at the top. Malcolm Brogdon also will play big minutes. Doesn't have as much upside. Don't love the price. Miles Turner in a big game last game, but normally he's a guy that you know doesn't have a ton of upside. Nah, not super interested in Justin Holiday or McDermott or Lamb. Everyone else kind of just passes for me. On the Lakers side, so LeBron James is at the top at 10.4K. If you can get to him, I think it's a safe play. No Anthony Davis, you know, should play 35 plus minutes in close games. So I do like LeBron at the top. Uh, with Schroeder, Harold Kuzma, Schroeder's the safest just because of the minutes. He should play over 30. So, yeah, I think Schroeder is the safest. Harold, we know the minutes have been all over the place, so it's so hard to trust that. Kuzma, the minutes have been a little bit up and down, too. Um, don't love the price there at 6K. Markeith Morris, if he continues to start, I think is an okay value play. 4.3K is, like, not an amazing price, but he has played 22, 24, 34, and 30 minutes the last four games. So, yeah, I do have some interest in Markeith Morris. THT isn't playing huge minutes, probably gets about 15, which makes him a little bit riskier. Still no Marcus Saul. Um, Caruso looks like he's back. He'll probably get around 20 minutes. Again, viable punt play. But yeah, that's really it for uh, the Lakers, and I think that's going to do it for the video as well. So if you guys have been enjoying the content so far, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos, you don't go live. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow in the live stream.